Hello and welcome to this lecture. My name is Mumshad Manambeth and we are learning Kubernetes for beginners. In this lecture, we will talk about creating a pod using a YAML based configuration file. In the previous lecture, we learned about YAML files in general. Now we will learn how to develop YAML files specifically for Kubernetes. Kubernetes uses YAML files as inputs for the creation of objects such as pods, replicas, deployments, services, etc. All of these follow a similar structure. A Kubernetes definition file always contains four top level fields the API version, kind, metadata, and spec. These are the top level or root level properties. These are also required fields, so you must have them in your configuration file. Let us look at each one of them. The first one is the API version. This is the version of the Kubernetes API we are using to create the object. Depending on what we are trying to create, we must use the right API version. For now, since we are working on pods, we will set the API version as v1. Few other possible values for this field are apps forward slash v1 beta extensions slash v1 beta, etc. We will see what these are for later in this course. Next is the kind. The kind refers to the type of object we are trying to create, which in this case happens to be a pod. So we will set it as pod. Some other possible values here could be replica set or deployment or service which is what you see in the kind field in the table on the right. The next is metadata. The metadata is data about the object, like its name, labels, etc. As you can see, unlike the first two where you have specified a string value, this is in the form of a dictionary. So everything under metadata is intended to the right a little bit and so names and labels are children of metadata. The number of spaces before the two properties, name and labels, doesn't matter, but they should be the same as they are siblings. In this case, labels has more spaces on the left than name, and so it is now a child of the name property instead of a sibling, which is incorrect. Also, the two properties must have more spaces than its parent, which is metadata, so that it's intended to the right a little bit. In this case, all three of them have the same number of spaces before them, and so they are all siblings, which is not correct. Under metadata, the name is a string value, so you can name your pod, my app pod. And the labels is a dictionary. So labels is a dictionary within the metadata dictionary. And it can have any key and value pairs as you wish. For now, I have added a label app with the value my app. Uh, similarly, you could add other labels as you see fit, which will help you identify these objects at a later point in time. Say for example, there are hundreds of pods running a front-end application and hundreds of pods uh, running a back-end application or a database. It will be difficult for you to group these pods once they are deployed. If you label them now as front-end, back-end or database, you will be able to filter the pods based on this label at a later point in time. It's important to note that under metadata, you can only specify name or labels or anything else that Kubernetes expects to be under metadata. You cannot add any other property as you wish under this. However, under labels, you can have any kind of key or value pairs as you see fit. So it's important to understand what each of these parameters expect. So far, we have only mentioned the type and name of the object we need to create, which happens to be a pod with the name my app pod, but we haven't really specified the container or image we need in the pod. The last section in the configuration file is the specification section, which is written as spec. Depending on the object we are going to create, this is where we would provide additional information to Kubernetes pertaining to that object. 
This is going to be different for different objects, so it's important to understand or refer to the documentation section to get the right format for each. Since we are only creating a pod with a single container in it, it is easy. Spec is a dictionary, so add a property under it called containers. Containers is a list or an array. The reason this property is a list is because the pods can have multiple containers within them as we learned in the lecture earlier. In this case though, we will only add a single item in the list since we plan to have only a single container in the pod. The dash right before the name indicates that this is the first item in the list. The item in the list is a dictionary, so add a name and image property. The value for image is nginx, which is the name of the Docker image in the Docker repository. Once the file is created, run the command kubectl create f followed by the file name, which is pod definition.yaml and Kubernetes creates the pod. So to summarize, remember the four top level properties, API version, kind, metadata, and spec. Then start by adding values to those depending on the object you are going to create. Once we create the pod, how do you see it? Use the kubectl get pods command to see a list of pods available. In this case, it's just one. To see detailed information about the pod, run the kubectl describe pod command. This will tell you information about the pod, when it was created, what labels are assigned to it, what Docker containers are part of it, and the events associated with that pod. That's it for this lecture. We will now head over to a demo, and I will see you in the next lecture.